Hello, and welcome back to Monster Train. Let's just get right into it, shall we? I got it. Uh, do I have an update for you today? Yeah, I do, actually. I do have something I want to tell you. First of all, we are Hellhorn today. Hellhorn plus random. Let's do it. I was Melting Awoken last episode, I believe. Yeah. But I do have something to tell you, which is the, the nine win streak highlights are on their way. I have clipped all of the videos except for one, and I'm putting them in a playlist. It's out of order right now, so the so first of all, there will not be a first win in that series because the first win was during some Streamlabs problems. Streamlabs crashed like three times, the VODs all chunked up, and I can't highlight it easily, so I'm not going to. So it'll be starting at a win streak of one and going all the way through. Uh, there'll be one through nine. Win streak number four, or, or like win number four was is already up because it was a YouTube video. It was the Rage Siren run. And then number five is up as well because uh, I didn't I didn't think to do them in order. I was just like, here's a bunch of highlights. And then someone was like, hey, I want to see all of these. So, you know, uh, basically 5.30 content, 5.30 stream highlights coming to you every day for the next, uh, like, I don't know, probably like the next week. I got like five or six videos set to upload, plus later in the afternoon today will be the co-op run with Cranberry. And uh, yeah, that's about it for Monster Train stuff. I'm going to be bringing some new stuff to the YouTube as well. going to be playing uh, probably Neon Abyss. I played a little bit of that and I went, ooh, yeah, this looks like fun. So I'm going to give that a shot as well. Branch out a little bit, you know. Play something a little out of my comfort zone. Uh, all that out of the way. Hey, uh, also, if you enjoy this video, you know, don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, uh, tell me to shut up, whatever you want to do. And now, without any further ado, let's begin. Seraph the Temperant, so the Sap Seraph. We got Hidden Passage, Energy Siphon, and Inflame. We are Hellhorned Stygian. Okay. This is a fine start. Like, this is a pretty good set of cards to start with. And here we have... Ah, we get our choice. We get Rage Prince or we get Play Plus Ten Prince. I think that because we have Stygian as our secondary, it's a little better to go Slay Plus Ten. There are good tanks we can find in here. Lots of good tanks we can find in here, whereas I think that there's not as good DPS without Stygian being your main. Because this Prince wants someone to sit behind him and support him, where this Prince wants to sit behind someone and just clear. And I like this one a little more. Mmm. Oh, I love Totem Fragment, and I love Gurg's Goad. So, if I had picked... What I should do now is I should map the Gene Banner. I'll take Totem Fragment. Gurg's Goad would be what I would take if I picked Rage Prince, because if I picked Rage Prince, we could find Branded Warrior, Alpha Fiend, Horned Warrior. Ah, shit, wait, if I find those anyway, it's still pretty good, right? Hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. But Totem Fragment is really strong just because if I hold over a kill spell, I'll kill everything when it hits the top floor. Like, this is a really, really easy answer, but hopefully nothing hits the top floor. I'm gonna take Gurg's Goad. But it's weird. It's kind of awkward. Because I'm gonna have to, like, pick Alpha Fiend and make him a tank or something. I don't know. It's a tough choice. Mark of Invasion here. That's five times three top four with yeah mark of invasion is pretty easy with how horns did you and they they have you learn the game with red green but i think red purple is easier because you start with so much damage spell so much damage spell you start with so many damage spells there we go yes hello i speak english fluently even i know you might not believe that but it is true let's see here collector top four a little awkward a little, a little awkward here. Takes three. So the best thing to do here is I'm gonna take a little, I'm gonna take like two pyre damage for this, but we're going to ascend this guy. I guess I could have torched him as well. It doesn't make a difference. I think it actually it, he dies either way. But ascending him feels a little cooler. And our prince is at 35, so we just gotta we gotta draw a train train steward frozen lance here or a train steward. Ah, I guess this is fine as well. Because he only takes three. Now I have to draw. I mean, I, I I have to draw an out here. It is not possible for me to miss it. All right, a very fine first combat. Basically checked all the boxes except for I took two damage. The only box we didn't check there was I took two damage instead of zero. 
which is a box that is worth considering as a uh, this isn't great, but they'll find. Hmm. There's a bit of a concern here. This train steward's gonna only give me one round. I have to like I think I was supposed to play the armor card on him there. Oh my god. I might actually take a lot of damage off of this because I didn't think that through. I was supposed to play the armor card here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I took some free damage for that. That's rough. A little bit of a mistake there. It's not the end of the world. I'm just gonna. I'm gonna take 20. Yeah, I should not have taken that. It was clean right up until I made that minor misstep. It happens. A molting imp is really good. One molting imp in this run. Very nice. Mm. I don't really like any of this here. We don't have an offering card for offering token. I'm gonna skip that. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. We can recover from this. Or maybe I die just barely and go. Ah. Large stone rage seven plus twenty five. Yo, give me like basically everything is good from this banner. Oh yeah. You can make your case for the incant siren there, eh, the rage siren. I don't want to hear it. We got the hot shark. That's real clean. That's real, real clean. Uh, I'm not going to give him plus 10, although 100 health. No. Against any either of the other seraphs, I would give him the plus 25 we call it a day. However, I don't need to, and we want to hold out for endless against Sap Seraph. Ugh, High Priest. Armor 10 is not worth it here. High Priest threatens me. High Priest threatens me quite a bit. And we don't need a unit draft, right? I don't think so. We hope for a top four collector, and we should... We'll kill this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're good. We should be fine. A little, you know, a little upset with myself for taking that 20. It was avoidable, but what can you do? It happens, right? We... You gotta not tilt. You gotta move on from your mistakes. I move on from my mistake here. Find myself in a more sane place as a result. So we get two slays. I get one round out of Hornbreaker Prince against the boss. Oh wait, he just dies to Titan Sentry. That's right. Uh, one one thing to note as well, this is a perfect example of it. If you are afraid of... Ch I mean, High Priest, he just gets bodied by Large Stone. He cannot handle Large Stone. Plus 15, plus 40 gives a unit an extra like six rounds against him. It's just too much. Fortify is definitely the pickup here. More armor for our prince is very important. Titan's Gratitude would be a pickup if I took the spell weakness totem fragment. Hmm. There's a great case to be made for just picking the Hellvent here, duping the shark and calling that good. And I kind of like it, right? I kind of like that idea. Shark, shark, prince. I mean, almost almost good enough, right? The only thing to be concerned about is maybe dying to Daedalus, but with two sharks, like, how do I die? And we can maybe find a really strong uh, horned warrior here. Alpha Fiend is too big. He's too big. I can't pick Alpha Fiend here. I think I don't want to take either of these. Although, actually, picking Steelworker is not bad. So here's, here's the idea. You have the large stone shark, and then behind him you have Steelworker. Steelworker just buys you a bunch of free rounds of Frostbite, while also pumping out 20 damage per round, which is not negligible. Oh, Alpha Fiend, you're just too big. There was a, there's a great case, now that I've seen the Alpha Fiend, to have just taken a plus 25 for this shark, right? Because Although High Priest might have put me in dire straits there, so maybe it wasn't right. Why couldn't this just be, like, Horned Warrior, man? I'm gonna pick Steelworker. It's not great. I'm gonna pick it though. The worst case is maybe I find Horned Warrior and then I just remove Steelworker later. Because Horned Warrior is way better. Consumable. Space Prism is the best choice here. Prismal Dust would also have been fine, and Pack Morsels would have been bad. Uh, take 10 gold. Although uh, Crystalline Seeds has been not bad in the past, I will. I usually only take that card if I'm going to use it to trigger Incants. If I'm in a give me a bunch of zero cost cards sort of run. Alright. 
Blading Seal. This is a pretty easy combat. I think this is the one that has no Quarji. Worth noting, I suppose. They lost middle floor, absolutely fine. This is the old... Uh, this is the... Me sitting on a pedestal screaming. Hey, don't forget about draw priority. It's an important mechanic. That's what I'm screaming out to you. And yet I don't listen to my own dang old advice. That's fine. It's not that big of a deal. We actually drew the train steward in the clutch there. Train steward saves the life. Saves my life, I might even go so far as to say. Not the life, but all life. On Azeroth. I've been, uh, been keeping my eye on the, uh, the what's what for... Not, not Val for Azeroth, what is it? Uh, Shadowlands. I've actually been looking at it and I'm a little excited for Shadowlands, I gotta tell you. I feel... I feel just like, I feel a little inkling of hope in the back of my mind. I'm like, hey, maybe Blizzard isn't gonna fuck this up. Just like, deep down inside, I know that they're gonna do something just god-awful and ruin it, but like, there's a piece of me that's like, hey, maybe this is gonna be an okay expansion. I don't know. Maybe we're falling into every other expansion is good. We'll see. You don't want to hear my thoughts on, uh... Shadowlands, though, is just, you know, there's nothing for me to tell you about this round. I'm just playing cards. I play the he spawn card I play. Or he spawn he spawn card I play? It's, it's late. I should tell you that as well. I am shifting my recording schedule. Not a lot, just for today. I'm shifting it into a... Uh, I'm going to be recording basically for the next, like, four hours. I'm going to do a big block of recording to record another series. Neon Abyss. And I'm just gonna, I'm not gonna, I might not make it a everyday sort of thing. That was a waste. I probably won't, because sustaining a everyday upload schedule kind of gets to be a lot. But, you know. Do it, like, sustaining like four videos a day gets to be a lot, I should say. It's gonna overwhelm me a little bit. Guy away. This and it's fine. We take this one. This is a run that's very, very. It's not a hundred percent, but it is well poised to take on uh, most of what it's gonna face because we have Hornbreaker Prince, who is a very easy use or a very easy unit to use for this uh, purpose of just like clearing an entire run as your main damage dealer. And we have a great tank for him. And we answer backline. Like we answer almost everything right now. Ancient Synergy. This is the card you look for with Totem Fragment. However, Spike of the Stygian is also not bad. Harness the Titan, kind of worthless. I really have not used this card very much lately. I'm thinking I kind of want to pick Ancient Synergy, but I'm also thinking uh, like 90 is 102, but that is not great. I'm gonna skip this. I'm gonna look for the answer here. Uh... The question here is very simple: Is Titan sent? Are one of these? Is one of these sentries the answer to my only fear? Do I replace Steelworker with one of these sentries? Oh my god! <laughs> I picked Gurg's Goad, and then across the entire. Uh, life of the run, I only saw Steelworker Alpha Fiend. I missed one unit draft on floor 2 because I tanked that uh, 18, or that 20. Oh, you know, that could have been the difference maker. But, anyway. Do I think Nameless Siren is, or Siren of the Sea are better than Steelworker? Honestly? Not really. It takes her, what, she gets 2 rage, so she gets plus 4, she goes 9, she takes her like what? Or spell cast to reach his damage output. <laughs> I guess I can maybe swing this. I can swing this. I can swing that. Yeah, 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 I can swing that for sure. Actually, as I think about it now. And I'm gonna take space on this run. So here's our idea. Our idea. We're gonna play Prince Shark on one floor. We're gonna play Deer Worker Shark on another floor, and then we're gonna duplicate this shark again, and we're gonna play Siren Shark on a third floor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I like that. It's kind of awkward because I might do like, too well. I might kill the enemies too effectively and my prince might not get to scale. 
but we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. I'm going right path here for sure. I want to look for Endless. That is quick. Plus 25 is... Uh, actually, Rage 7 is really good for Steelworker. Give him Rage 7. Plus 25 is okay. What do I? What else would I give him? More damage. Decent. 25 here is also okay. Uh, I'm not going to end with both of these, so I should give the shark that's going to sit in front of my prince a plus 25, actually. And then I'm going to roll. Endless. Wow. We're hitting it. We're just we're just hitting everything. It's crazy. Because I could just give him rage 14. Yeah, I mean, that's just he's just massive. He's actually so large. That's crazy. That's crazy how big he is. I guess I should have looked at this, but... I mean, yeah, I, this is like the fifth shark I've seen. It's crazy how many... I've just seen so many sharks. So crazy. Everything about this run? Crazy. We clear train stewards as fast as we can. There is no space on this train for train steward. And... This is always an interesting one. Brawler versus Reaper. Because it's very straight. It's very simple. Uh, he gains damage at the same rate between these two, right? Because he's doing 50 with Brawler, he's doing 50 with Reaper, he's slight plus 10 takes him to 70, slight plus 20 takes him to 70. No matter how you slice it, the Brawler is better, except when you can apply your own multi-strike, or theoretically against Sap Seraph, because minus 3, or getting Sap for 3 is that it loses him 6 attack, but it actually loses him 12 attack with Brawler, or it only actually loses him 6 with Reaper. Uh, what does all of this lead to? Uh, is a great question. The question is basically, which would, do I value my the the ten armor enough to be slightly worse against Seraph the Temperant? I think the answer is not, because this is also a run where I can very reasonably pick up a one horns tome if they offer it. Mm, haste combat. Haste doesn't matter. We can take plus six. We're very very strong right now. The only thing to be concerned about here is our draw priority. I have way too many units, and I'm not guaranteed to hit my sharks in time. I could actually lose on this floor if I don't draw a shark turn one. Yeah, this could be really bad. Like, this could just be... this could just be it. The Nameless Siren? I should probably not pick. I should probably remove her, actually. I am king of talking about draw priority, and yet what have I done to myself? I'm gonna drop the siren in front of him. No, wait. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's. Mm, that's fine. Prince top floor. Yeah. The siren. She, the, the idea is cool to have all of these units, but uh, we talk about draw priority a lot, and you get to see where draw priority can really bite you here. Like, this is it really biting me. But it's fine. I would just prefer to put the endless shark down here. However, on this combat, it should not matter. And then we get one more shark up here. He gets a slay trigger. I should just kill this guy. He's just gonna die anyway. Yeah, the rage siren. She isn't gonna. She isn't gonna. The problem is that draw priority, right? If I could choose which units I had draw priority on, I would be. 100% okay, however, because you cannot choose your draw priority, I can't uh, guarantee the shark draws, which can be really bad. Because uh, throwing plus 25, or yeah, plus 25 on Steelworker makes it a little simpler as well, but he didn't get plus 25, he got other things. Party boy, he threatened me here? I don't think he threatens me here. Prince is at 90. Uh, if I can, I, I should drop this guy so that my shark doesn't take the damage because he's going he, we don't get the slay our damage output is too high to get slays right now because our prince goes the very last like this one he'll slay this one he will not so we'll just drop the imp meep meep indeed my friend is it case for trying to like ascend this guy all the way up to top floor but not his 14 rage is really strong. He's actually massive. Right? He's still better than if I gave him 2 plus 10s, right? If I gave him 2 plus 10s? Now, right now, he has dropped a little bit below where he would be if he had 2 plus 10s. It's higher higher damage output in the early sections of the game, and then it uh, 
scales downwards with time. But him getting, like, him scaling down is fine, because as he scales down, he pumps out enough damage for our prince to scale up. Steelworker as a DPS? Who would have thought, right? And passage is really smart here. It doesn't make a big difference, but it's still smart to do. Alright. Fine, fine. Alright, we took the trial, we took no damage, it's just a little scary. March of Shields, I shouldn't utilize very well. Rage Serum. I mean, Rage Serum extends our Steelworker's damage output by three turns, right? And then Inferno, I think not here. I'm gonna pick Rage Serum. I've really come around a lot on Rage Serum recently. And always take Unnamed Tome. Ever since that run where I, was, I skipped it and then died... The, the, in, the near infinite run where I skipped it and then died to Living Armor. And then we just want a removal and then buff spells at this point. I'm gonna, I actually, I know I just put her in, but I'm going to remove the Encamp Siren. It's just, it's too much variance, right? With her in the deck, it's too much variance. I can't handle that. Because those, those draws where I miss the shark for two turns is just unwinnable, I feel like. I feel like, so as a general rule of thumb with it when it comes to draw priority units, if your main damage dealing source is your champion, like in this case, and it's super, super important to hit a frontliner for him, you gotta... <laughs> you gotta stay below three, right? Because then you can put your damage dealing unit on the top floor, and even in the worst case, I'll hit his shark by the time the enemies reach him. Whereas with the siren in the deck, I would hit a shark, but then like Steelworker would die, I think it's awkward. That's my rule of thumb on that. Do I even have anything I wanna do on this though? I guess we want a minus one on this card and flame. And there's really not much here though. I mostly came here for the removals. We're gonna remove Train Steward and then we're gonna go to Torches. Although, Frozen Lance is a little worse than Torch, because... Save our money. Uh, Sweet Boss is a little scary, but not that scary. I think Crystal Cloak isn't scary. This is probably the scariest one, I was gonna say, is Self-Made Harpy with Sycophants. So, you know, just, you know, no big deal. I just rolled the highest DPS boss in the game, 35 damage out, or 30 damage. Yeah, ugh. We can take Spell Shield, at least. And we have two Ascend cards in the deck, so theoretically we might be able to split the Sycophant from the Harpy. It's just real scary. I hate this combat a lot. It makes me very afraid. Again, no Sharks on my first turn. What are you gonna do? Probably just position middle floor. Although he'll be fine bottom floor. Do I want to position middle floor? I don't know. It's a little bit... A little bit questionable. I think. Is it that questionable? Putting him down here, he'll kill two, he'll take eight, he'll net negative three, he'll be at 12 health. I, I, the bottom floor setup is actually not that smart here, because this gives me an extra round to find an ascend card and split the sycophant from the boss, which is a very major thing. Thanks, Bolting. It's very cool. Uh, I want to put the, the high health sentry up here. Absolutely. The high health one goes here, and then the endless one goes on the middle floor. Or on the bottom floor? No, if this was Crystal Cloak, you'd go bottom floor. Then he goes middle floor. Now, if I don't hit a torch, I can't play my endless shark, but... It should be okay. I need to get some slays. I could do a double ascend and we get a slay in here. Yeah, that's probably worth it. And then obvious, uh, obvious, uh, molting up here. Not, you know, not ideal. But it is still fine. Like, playing him down here is fine. He's fine here. The only thing they even be worried about is this uh, 6105, right? Basically, the, this combat is usually super free. The 6105 is the only guy to worry about, but we've mitigated his attack gain quite a bit. However, the thing we really have to worry about on this one is the boss, because the boss is a uh, thick lord. Because it's 85 from you two. I need to give you 20 attack. 84 puts you at 99. 
I think this is enough, right? Oh no, I didn't ping a spell sh I didn't ping a spell weakness down. I didn't ping a spell shield down. Why not? I don't think I was able to. That's very unfortunate. To rage this guy then. Oh well. For some reason I thought he was at one spell shield. Yeah. Alright. It's not the end of the world. I'm a little afraid of self-made harpy. However, self-made harpy having to contend two rounds with this uh, shark is going to be a lot. Oh, and we have unnamed tome for this. Another out. We have the unnamed tome. We can just silence the sycophant. Excellent. Thank you, unnamed tome. Not often that I really go, oh, thank the lord we have unnamed tome here. But we have unnamed tome here. Thank the lord. And so we can do, we can split it like this. Yeah, that's super good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Cool, cool. Alright, so we'll get out of this a lot uh, better than I expected. I'm pretty sure. Because now this, now this doesn't matter, right? He's just going to take a bunch of frostbite. Yeah, he's dead. He is doomed. Yeah, for sure. Cool. This is a combat that can be very scary. I'm very glad I had that unnamed tome, and I also hit the Ascend card at the right timing. Very good, very good. Pack it in, everyone. Great work. We did it. Secretly, this is a Frostbite deck. Give me Cuddlebeard. Imp in a Box. Imp Port and Work March of Shields. I don't hate Imp in a Box. I also don't hate March of Shields. There's like a world where we can put both sharks on the same floor and then march them up. I'm gonna try it. I very rarely utilize this card to any good effect. Mm. Worst case, right? It's like it's just like playing Fortify, which I'm okay with. One energy for ten. None of these cards seem that good. We skip. All right, we have a lot of money. We've taken a lot of trials. We're kind of cruising. Uh, unit upgrades or fish for a trinket. There's. There's a few strong trinkets, right? Anything that affects rage makes Steelwork grow a little better. Uh, Cuddlebeard, of course, very, very strong as well. And, of course, all of the usual trinkets that are good here. But this is consistently good, whereas this is high rolly. But we could have some good stuff at this cavern as well. Hmm. Tough choice. I feel like I don't want to do many upgrades. I mean, I don't have any. Actually, as I look at it, right? The Siren was all that still needed upgrades, so I'd be going this way for the removal. I mean, we get to choose a random artifact instead of this, and then I can put my money into removing cards. I think that's a little better. And then we're going to... Oh yeah, if I go to this Hellvan, I can actually get like a crazy strong floor on the top floor, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. We're going to aim for this Hellvan then, I suppose. Well, this, like, this Merchant of Magic isn't that good. I don't have much. Double stack is all I can really find here. Yeah, so I think we're gonna go... Oh, I don't need that super strong floor till Sarah. And we're gonna go here for sure. Oh, actually we'll hit two merch on the magics. What did all that teach me? Uh, we're gonna go right back. I wanna do a bunch of removing. I wanna clear out all of this garbage. Absolutely. Yeah, if we, if we can thin this deck out, we get to some pretty crazy stuff, I believe with the torches we're so we're getting somewhere hmm drop cage is good we have two ascension cards uh sigiled seaweed does very little i would only really pick sigiled seaweed at this point if we're against uh, diligent silencing purifier is strong i wish i could give him another multi-strike this would actually be such a nutty alpha fiend if i had picked rage prince like this is a run that you could pick rage prince and just see like a super strong alpha fiend like my man goes kind of nuts I'll pay for two removals here. And we're gonna thin this deck out. I should really remove these spell weaknesses as well. I think they're actually worse, come to think of it. i remove the spell weaknesses next. Okay, spell shield fell. I, I didn't look at the fells, but they were all pretty easy here, I think. Each fell should be pretty straightforward. Rage is the only one that even really threatens that much. Might take the prince off, but that's no big deal. Now this is the sort of draw I like to see. Bottom floor setup is better for endless shark purposes. Uh, interestingly enough, hmm. It's, he's, the wait. 
and armor at 15, 50, 65. What, what was, let's do this math right. 65, and then you hit for 15, so you're at, you're hitting, you're doing 80. I'd have to draw into another armor card to save, to, to get that, so I, that's not worth it. Put the 10 armor there, it's fine. Worth considering, though. Consider armoring the enemy to get that first slay trigger in there. It is something that is not necessarily a bad idea. Oh, fuck. If Fel armors it, hang on a minute, I was right to march of shields up here. Weird. Fine. There's like, at this point, this run, there's not much I do, right? And at this point, there's not a whole lot that I have to do. I should have marched of shields. There was no real reason not to, I guess. Ah, sweet. We throw the fortify on him. And then my Hornbreaker Prince gets the slay. Very, very nice. I have no problem silencing this war. Yeah, I think that we don't get much better than this for silencing. Rage armor. My man is massive. What the fuck? He's huge. He's doing 100 damage. What a legend. I should just throw this in away. Go get him in. He's in the run and he's like... One molting imp is like... I pick this and... There's like a chance that it just dives in front of the bullet and saves the Sap Seraph fight. Just clears the entire floor and we go, oh my god, that imp just saved our lives. Dip this guy lower. We can, like, most of our draws are super low impact right now. Branding right is a high impact draw, and, like, that's basically it. Or not, uh, we don't have branding right, it's a, it's a high impact, like, pickup, is what I'm trying to say. Because as it is, we are not doing a whole lot of meaningful things with our cards here. I should be playing these hidden passages on Fel, I suppose. Although dazing her isn't that strong, it's still worth, I suppose. Don't forget we picked up Drop Cage. Alright, I actually... Like, there's there's worlds where I could have like double ascended this guy to send him to the pyre and kill him if I need to. That's a that's a line that I didn't need to do, but it's worth considering. Just like keeping in my mind as something that can be done. Killing this guy's better, and not killing him. Yeah, just keep spell weakness on stuff. Killing him is fine because it saves health on that top floor shark. Where I, and like with the health point that he was being left at. He was going to die to the top four shark before Prince gets the slay. And then, so an interesting line here, and like maybe a reasonable line. If I had drawn the ascend card, right? There's there's a world where there's a very strong line, which is to, and the main reason I picked up March of Shields, right, is to when the shark dies, we put him middle four, and then we ascend him and send him to the front, and then we just have massive floor of beef or. Our boy. This is gonna be our long term on this run as well. Yeah, but we have this. Absolutely. She's probably not even gonna make it up there. Which is a good sign because being at that level of power means that you're probably strong enough to deal with what comes next. Oh, she does make it up there. The frostbite isn't that high. Oh, and he misses a bunch of damage because he has to punch through this, right? Yeah, he misses like 100 damage. But still. Very strong. Killed by the shark. Very good, everyone. Very proud of you all. I don't hate Spike of the Stygian. I don't love it. It's just fine. It's just fine. I'm not going to take energy, so I'm not going to pick this, though. I'm just going to skip that. I'm going to take draw. Very rare that I don't pick up energy. Draw space is the line, though, I believe. Well, I guess the space ended up being bad. I should have draw draw energy. Although I like being able to always put my prince top floor. Not super important, but worth. Right, and I decided that I wasn't going to go here, so I'm going to hit back-to-back -back magic merchants. And plus we get to fish another artifact here. Founding seal. Where's that rage siren? Plus three health is fine. I don't have anyone with incant, but we could have committed to incant. Wrong faction, I believe. If we were Stygian main, I would have considered it a little more. Permafrosting a hidden passage is good. Here, I believe. I believe. I mean, the question is, what else would I be doing? <laughs> mm, minus one holdover on it would actually be the nuts. 
I guess we'll minus one one of them. I don't actually think I want a permafrost. I'm gonna throw a consume onto a frozen lance. We're gonna roll this for holdover. Ah, oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Now, holdover on hidden passage is good, but maybe holdover on fortify is better? Or like holdover on march of shields maybe is better? I think holdover march of shields is better. Moving enemies around is cool, but we can't like stack a bunch of dazed onto the boss. Like we can't stack a bunch of dazed onto Seraph because even if I stack, if I play this every single turn, it's worth a total of like 16 minus eight. It's like eight dazed basically onto Seraph, assuming I never use it on anything else. That's not going to be very strong because he doesn't hit the shark for those eight rounds and the rage ticks away. It's just like, it's just weird. I don't think it's that good. Whereas on March of Shields it is free armor 10 for, it's basically just armor 10 every turn for my sharks, which is good. I like that. But moving things around is good. I don't know. I think that this just, I think doing this wins me the game, basically. I'm going to pick that. And I'm going I'm not gonna minus one it because we're going to another magic shop and if we hit double stack it will actually win us the game. And same thing here, right? I'm not going to pick this for the same reason I didn't pick it last time. I think it's a little better to not take the double sap reduction, like double efficiency on sap. Ugh. Your fire combat, very scary. Mm, but spell shield too, I mean, it changes nothing, right? We don't do, we don't cast spells on the enemies. 400 gold. It's a very scary combat. I am concerned a little bit, but I believe it is okay. A little awkward. A little awkward. So we drop our... So always Prince top floor. Always Steelwork and bottom floor. Always gonna rage him. I guess, I'm, I mean, I guess this turn's always the same, isn't it? I'm always putting Molting Imp right here. And then I'm gonna drop Fortify here. So the only question we have to ask is do we unnamed Tome? And the answer is, uh, yeah, why not? Because the boss cannot be silenced. This is always just gonna save, this is gonna do the same thing every time, which is save me one curse. I think at the start of the combat is the best time for that to save me one curse. And we get this slay, okay. It's actually free, excellent. Getting this first slay is basically going to be enough to snowball, I think, out of control. And a little more rage here. Uh, maybe it's not enough to snowball out of control, but it's enough to help. I just wish that this deck did something. Like, I, I feel like this is a common problem I can face with Hellhorn, where I'm just like, yeah, this deck's cool and all. I wish it, like, was useful. Like, I wish I had cards that were worth playing. I've thinned this deck out to be very, very little on the actual cards front. I can play cards every turn. What am I playing? I don't know, I don't know what I'm playing. I'm gonna double ascend this guy so that he doesn't curse me. And then I'm gonna just start armoring up this shark. And it's like, it's real bad, right? Just hold over for 10 armor every turn. That doesn't feel good. Doesn't feel good at all. However, <laughs> what else am I what else, what else am I to do? I don't know. I can like march of shields the purifiers up to the front and then they won't curse me, but it's like yeah, so we're fine. You can see that we are fine here because the shark does enough to punch through the shield the steel wings and then our hornbreaker prince has scaled fast enough. The difference maker truly was that collector spawn. It was very fortunate that it spawned on the top floor for us. Very, very fortunate that we had that spawn happen. I guess I could torch you. If I could torch you twice, I could kill the purifier. Yeah. And turn, who cares? We have 13 cards after the first time through the deck, and it's like, eh. Yeah. What am I even playing? I don't know. Wait, what of these cards is useful? None of them. Not really. Just a bunch of, like, energy siphons and torches and fucking. Frozen lances, and I'm just sitting here like, what the, what the hell is all of this? I removed like 10 cards, and I still have like 20 more to go. But I got removed so many cards, and yet there's somehow more.
And yet, despite all of this talking I'm doing, this combat is looking very, very clean. I must say. This combat is looking like we're gonna take zero. I would be at, like, full health. I would actually be at full health right now, except for that bit of damage I took early on, right? What can you do? I missed on the March of Shields hidden passage play. However, I'm just gonna send you all the way up. When I draw a double like that, I'm just gonna do that. Like, it's absolutely fine. Getting him to the top floor is good. I missed on getting this shark up here with the March of Shields, but I, this is this is why I should have permafrosted, I suppose. But you know, the idea is I'll remove so much that I won't have a choice but to draw a send at the right timing. And we're fine. Like we're fine. My man does 340 times nine, or not 340 times nine. He's has he does 340 and has nine health. You know, my quest to find a card worth playing continues. Inferno is almost worth playing. Is Impish Scholar worth playing? Sorry, wrong button. Ah, right, it's just like Rage Serum. Yeah, it's gonna bring back. Yeah. I'm just gonna skip that. And my quest to find a playable card comes to an end. My playable card is March of Shields. And I think that it's fine. We're going left path for sure. No unit upgrades I need. We're going to duplicate the high health shark. Absolutely. Gonna peep this shop. We got hold over plus ten minus one. Fine, fine, fine. Never in my life again will I pick volatile gauge willingly. Not in a million, million, billion years will I pick this card of my own volition again. And these are both not good, so we roll. Rage does not decay. Yeah, that seems good. Yeah, this seems good. I mean, I have the I have the money for it, right? This at this point, the question becomes: Let's let's do the rest of this so I can illustrate, right? I do not really feel that strongly about holding anything over. Maybe this hidden passage. I guess this is fine. Throw a minus one on to inflame. Plus ten. Do not want. Permafrost. But since we held it over now, I definitely don't need permafrost. So there's nothing to permafrost. So we'll go a minus one on to March of Shields. We'll do a plus twenty and consume into a Orc. And then, this is what I wished to illustrate, right? When you look at a collection of tales, you may be like, hey, this is not great, it's not crazy strong, but it is, like, at this point, the, the Trader Scroll is not worth it, Rules of Containment is not worth it, so it's the difference of buying a collection of tales or buying a card purge, right? Or the Permafrost, but I don't need Permafrost here. Alright, I'm gonna get rid of these energy siphons. This card's just worthless for me. Absolutely. Alright. 21 cards. I've, normally when you get down to this many, when you remove as much as I did on this run, you're like, hey, uh, I don't know if I want to remove anymore. And I'm like, nah, I could remove another like three cards from this deck without a, with ease. Did we see every possible uh, removal, by the way? I think we did. There, there. Yeah, we saw every removal we could. I think there's always a maximum number of removals you can see, which is four. And we saw four. Super, super nice. I think that this combat should go pretty cleanly. It's going to depend on how many slays my prince can rack up, which is tough. It's actually kind of hard for him to get a lot of slays, so we will see. Okay. Okay, just, just running the numbers here. I'm going to put this shark... I'm, I'm going to set the, the shark in the card slot, for sure. I'm gonna drop this Consume Frozen Lance and I'm molting up on this floor. And we're, we're, we have to build around getting this slay. I have to do everything in my power for him to get this slay. It's not easy, but we gotta work hard at it. It's, actually, it's impossible. As I start to look at it here, I'm like, no, wait, this isn't just not easy. This is impossible. You are not endless. Very unfortunate. Huh. Very, very unfortunate. Okay. So, we're gonna we're gonna drop Steelworker on this one. Yeah, drop Steelworker here. Put the shark in front of him. He's gonna get a little smack, but no big deal. Taking seventy six. What's you at? What are you at? You're at one. Oh god, what a weird number! It's one fifty four. 
Minus 76 is 84, 78. Okay, Prince gets this kill for sure. Nice, okay. So I don't, the, the numbers there just mean I don't need to torch you, which means I want to torch you. Okay. And I think that because we get this first slay, we will be able to see... We'll be able to see something pretty strong here, especially with this draw. So we send you up, we drop, a t we drop the Endless Shark in to tank, give you a Rage Serum. And the Shark up to the front. And now we have the Shark Floor. Welcome to Shark Tank. It's, you know, not that good of a joke. But still. Uh, we will probably want to silence the next floor here. I want to have my... my this guy not die. Right, this is an important thing to try and work out. Having my... having my Steelworker not die is very good. I can swing that. And I can. Like, I can do that pretty easily. We're gonna keep armoring him, first of all. I'm just gonna keep throwing him the inflames. Uh, I do want to just keep March of Shields up on... Uh, whichever one of these guys is in front. It's not gonna stack armor, it's just damage mitigation overall. I don't think this is good. Now... Uh, we just ascend you... And, but I do want this shark to die. I do want him to die, so I don't want to ascend this Shadelings. So as a result... We just press enter, I believe. Drop like a 6 in here, you know, I might as well like torch Sarah for what it's worth. I guess I could, I can, uh, I can actually kill this Shadelings as well. Yeah, that's, that's a smart play. Saves me, saves my next incarnation of this shark 30 health, which is good. Reasonable choice. And then, I think from here our prince has scaled well enough. He's up to 164, he's not getting his kills stolen from him. And he's gonna have a great shark entourage. These, this Gilded Wing and like this Gilded Wing is going to, they're going to threaten, of course, but it is fine. I believe it is fine. Torching Seraph, because these torches are so worthless. One of these, one of these sharks on the top floor is going to die ahead of the Romantic Combat, I'm pretty sure. However, uh, they've done their work. Our prince is scaling. Our prince is going to get to a point where he's, you know, you know, one horns tome and we just crush this, of course. But I did not get one horns tome, unfortunately. Since you're going up, I should just ascend you, I believe. Although I've been really liking just removing shade wings with this hidden path. Very nice. However, so what's important here is to make sure that this guy dies right. You're at 36, so you're dropping to. That's 12, right? Yeah, so I do want to split the Shade Wings. It's fine. Doesn't last. I mean, I give a little extra health to the Harvest Boy, but he's just like, I'm just going to be tanking heavies, and that's fine. We have 108 Pyre health, I'm going to be tanking these guys. Although, if this other one goes up at full health, uh, ah, that's only 40. Fine. Although, if, if this one goes up at full health, it's concerning, right? If I let all three of these go up at full health without interceding at all, it's going to be problematic. As a result, uh, I'm just going to double ascend. And then he just, he dies, he hits me for 10. That's fine. Not ideal, uh, but fine. Now, uh, also should March of Shields here, right? Because I'll still get the Slay Trigger. 191, my Prince does 250. But I'll take a lot less damage from this Darkwings, who will be uh, going up at... He'll just hit me twice instead of the, like, five times this guy threatened. Which is important to be microing like this because these double heavy waves do threaten me. If I had picked up a single One Horns Tome or the Brawler pickup, we would have gotten there. However, with the Brawler pickup, I think we would have missed that first slay and the snowball gets a little worse. But we also had Rage and Rage Does Not Decay, which we could kind of counteract with and pick up Rage Does Not Decay until the end of the run. You know, this is all... is all... semantics at this point. It's, it's really just all semantics. I think we have this. 
I'm pretty, pretty sure we have this. We just have a huge wall of meat for our prince. Hey, it's me for 22 instead of the, like, 50 that was threatened. Okay, so. Now we send you up. Yeah, send you up. Drop a shark down here. I kind of want to move you to the front. Do 80. You won't steal the kill. Oh yeah, you will steal the kill. Right? Because if I move you to the front, uh, it's 80 damage plus the 21 from the shark is not quite enough. Why does the shark have 8 rage? Oh, because I was giving him in flames. That's why. So, I'm gonna move... I don't generate much armor. I feel like this is fine. And I'm just gonna pop that Shade Wings. No reason to risk it. Worth considering that this guy might threaten me. This, this Dark Wings on the middle floor here. Does he threaten? He threatens me. A little bit of damage. However. I think it's fine because I was moving to the front. And he dies and this guy doesn't threaten me. We send you up with Hidden Passage. Send you up with Hidden Passage. And, like, maybe if I just send Seraph, that's right? I don't know. This is this is a play that requires a lot more confidence than I have in this run right now. If I send you, do you kill me? That's the question. Go up with one daze. 19 frostbite. Uh, let's 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 do this one, right? This is this is worth doing. You go up with one daze, you'll take 50. You, you take 19 damage. I'm just gonna whip out the calculator, man. Fuck this. I just I want to. I, I'm not uh, I'm not 100% confident in this run. I want to make sure, but I, I should be pretty confident actually. I, I want to make sure that this is the right. Uh, this is it. I'm just gonna press enter and actually. I'm almost certain that this is fine. My prince is 374 and he has three, like, 100 health sharks in front of him. Yeah. And as soon as we march with shields like this, it's fine. I can also... Yeah, I could SM you, absolutely. Turns out that the march of shields plan was actually really important, right? Making sure that I could uh, move the third shark in front was the difference maker. But I, I knew I could do it. And, like, what a, what a super unconventional run. Like, everything about this feels wrong, doesn't it? I picked up Gurg's Goat, and then the only demon I was able to get was fucking Steelworker. And I had to double st I'm like, what a, what a weird run, right? Oh, what a weird run. Took a bunch of damage, because the big thing that this run never answered is how am I killing double heavies? The answer up until then was Steelworker, but Steelworker stopped killing double heavies after floor 7, Except for the, it wasn't double heavies on 4-7, it was tank heavy, and he was able to put out enough damage with the shark to handle tank heavy. But heavy heavy is too much, that's 380 instead of, uh, like, 290, right? The numbers don't quite work out, so the pure fire combat was actually probably the easier combat, and the reason I was able to not take any damage. But, you know, the, the, one, the one change you make, the, the thing that kind of snowballed this run into a really weird position, the way that you make this run not so unconventional, is by playing the armor card on my Hornbreaker Prince on this floor, on, on floor one, instead of playing the torch on the backline guy. If you do that, then I could have taken this trial with confidence and gotten the unit draft. Maybe the unit draft gives me, I don't know, say, Horned Warrior. Horned Warrior just does what... Like, he, he just does what Steelworker did, but, like, ten times better, right? However, it worked. Like, we got there. Definitely a way to make this run a lot cleaner, though. Lots and lots of ways to make this run look a lot cleaner. But, regardless, super, super weird. Gurg's Goat ended up being a pretty good pickup, though. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed, don't forget to like. If you made it through the whole video, drop me a comment if you so desire. And don't forget to subscribe as well. I will see you in the next one. I hope you have a good one. Farewell.